Hi, and welcome to another edition of Plastic Models by Regular Dude. Today's going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to uh, kind of do... Uh, this video is going to fall into two categories. Number one, my plastic models for beginners, building from a photograph, is going to be the kit I'm going to be using to demonstrate something. And it's also going to be kind of a somewhat short, not too in-depth, but a little bit of a review of um, the new airbrush I got, which is the Neo for Iwata or Iwata TRN1 Trigger Airbrush, which is this right here. So I'm going to be killing two stones with one bird, so to speak. Um, this will fall under the category, like I said, of the beginner series. And I'm going to be using the M10 that I'm using to build from my photograph. Um, that's the kit I'm going to be using, but I'm going to demonstrate the trigger pull airbrush. So let me change my uh, camera view here. I'm going to go over my equipment real quick, and then we'll get into it. All right, first things first, let me refresh you, um, refresh your memory, or for some of you, this may be totally new news, um, My the rig that I use for airbrushing. I do not use a compressor. Um, I do all my work in the house. Uh, I have open windows between uh, my work area here and uh, the rest of the house, which is over there. So I like to keep the sound, the noise, down to a minimum. So for um, propellant purposes I use a CO2 cylinder. It is a five pound cylinder and uh, with a gauge, air hose, the whole thing. The nice thing about this setup is uh, A, it is silent. All you hear is the hiss of air from the airbrush. Uh, two, uh, you don't need a moisture trap because the CO2 is, the inside of that tank is completely free of moisture so there's no need for a moisture trap. So that's one less thing you have to deal with. And it's just really super convenient and uh, it's pretty inexpensive um, to have it refilled and I can, I can paint a lot of models with this thing. Uh, right now I've got about 550, 600 pounds in this tank and I've been using it for quite a while and then you know obviously I have the uh, gauge to regulate the pressure so um, that's the rig and uh, I got my hose with the quick connect here so let me get all this set up and uh, we'll get cracking alright friends and neighbors here we go um, now keep in mind I'm doing this in real time I have not tried this thing at all yet it's going to be totally shooting from the hip here. So the sound you hear in the background, if it's bothering you, sorry, it is my uh, compressor. So the first thing I want to do is um, I want to uh, stir up my paint. And I'm using the Tamiya XF62, which is um, olive drab. That's what I'm going to use for my base. And what I use for mixing it up is the old Badger airbrush stir and st magic stir stick thing. Now, uh, some people do this and some people think it's a bad idea. Time will tell for me, but um, I pre-thin my paint. I never, br air I never brush paint this stuff. It's always airbrush, so there's no need for me not to do this. And it'll be kind of an experiment, I guess. We'll see how it works in the long run. But I add thinner um, to the jar to bring it up to a certain level inside of here. There's lots of people that do it. Um, it's not an original idea by any means. The first person I saw that did it was uh, uh, Andy of Andy's Hobby Headquarters, uh, another YouTube channel. So, um, you know, that's why I do it. So, uh, it's very simple. You just get that baby in there, stir it up. Doesn't take very long. Nice agitator action. And should be good to go. Just 
run that in some water. Voila, it's clean. And the thinner I use for this is the, just the regular old, you know, uh, Tamiya X20 thinner. That's why I use to thin the paint. Uh, then I take... handy dandy dropper disposable dropper no less again I'm not showing probably most of you people that this isn't anything spectacular or you know earth shattering but you know I'm just I'm doing it because uh, there are people that may not have done this stuff first thing I want to do though since this is a new airbrush is I want to run some X20 through this thing just to make sure it's all clear. I don't think there's any reason why it shouldn't be, but I'm going to do it nevertheless. Just a few drops of X20. One of the things that uh, these little eyedropper bottles are really good for is putting thinners and stuff in. Pretty awesome. So, first of all, you can see that pulling that, nothing's coming out. I get your air going once you, and it's like a two-stage trigger on a rifle if you're familiar with that you pull it back gets to that point once you pull it farther than that stop point then something's gonna come out in the case of a two-stage rifle trigger that means a bullet's gonna come out in the case of this it's going to be thinner so I'm running this about 15 psi so we'll see how it works so I'm gonna just get some paint here. Let's put about that much in there. That's a lot, but I got a lot to paint here. Okay, so I'm gonna set that over there. All right, oh, cripes. Got a little bit on the rim here. And I don't want to get it on the lid unless absolutely necessary. And I like the fact that it does come with the lid. It's kind of cool. So hopefully you saw all that. Yeah, I'm sure you did. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on the paint so I don't knock it over. All right. So first things first. That's, that's pretty dandy. So I'm gonna throw down with a little bit on the bottom here first. Now some of you may be saying, why in tarnation would you get an airbrush like that? Well, I explained it in my initial unboxing of this airbrush. I'm just getting to where I can't really manipulate the regular old school top trigger it's just man I'm just having a real hard time with it so I figured I'd give this a shot because this is considered double action because you can control how much paints coming out as you can see that's very faint and then it really launches out so so initial impression um, this is pretty cool I like it And the reason I'm doing this is um, one of my viewers asked if I would kind of do a little bit of a review on it. So that's kind of what this is, just to see how it works. Okay, and I, I gotta say, I'm liking it so far. Yes, sirree. Pretty groovy. Eventually, I'll be able to test it out on some aircraft and see how how it does spraying finer stuff like camouflage and all that. But for armor, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like this. I like it, peoples. Me liking. 
So let's do this. I'm trying to keep from spraying my hands too much. Let's do this lower fender portion here. Pretty diggity there, folks. So my initial thoughts, yeah, I like it. The, uh, the control is really good. See, I feel like I can control this better as to how much paint I'm getting out much better than the regular type. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, what kind of paint job is that? You're just blowing paint on there. There's no modulation or none of that. Well, I don't do the modulation thing. I've tried it and, um, you know, it looks good. And a lot of people get really good results with it. I just, uh, I got my own way of doing things. I don't do the, I don't do the modulation thing. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. It's just not my style. I've tried it and it's just, you know, I may try it again in the future, but I just, I control how my paint turns out with the uh, weathering process later. Again, that's just my method. And again, it's not, in, you know, 10 by 10 rule. 10 people do 10 different things. So let's take a look inside the cup, see how much paint we've used here. Yeah, getting, getting close to being out. So it blows a lot of paint, but that can be controlled all right so i'm out there so let me let me ref ref refill this thing and i'll uh, turn this off while i'm doing it so you don't have to watch all right as you can see here um i have got everything painted i'll move that kind of move this stuff out of the way um i didn't feel necessary to you know show you show to show you painting all the rest of this stuff you got the idea from the get-go and um, so far so good so now comes the next part that people often ask about how do you clean it well we're gonna find out here so first uh, let's see where is my let's see I generally what I do is I start with some 91 percent um, alcohol in this bottle right here 91 percent and I just pour some of that in there and then I use my ultra cheap testers brush to clean around and get the majority of the paint off now this is uh, something I want to bring up I don't know if you can actually see it in the bowl, but whenever I put the, oh man, the 91% in here and um, I, I start scrubbing around with it, it actually dissolves the paint. And that's one of the things, and again, this is just my opinion here in comparison to other paints. Uh, straight up acrylic, water-based acrylic paints, like say Vallejo and again you know there are tons of people that can get that stuff to work like a champ I just can't seem to get it I just can't seem to get it um, figured out um, but in putting the uh, the alcohol in there it actually dissolves the paint whereas with the Vallejo or some of the other brands like that you know you put your cleaner in there and it it doesn't dissolve it it basically it'll help it peel off it's like a skin and that's one of the things that can cause some trouble for some people um, specifically me and uh, so anyway that's that um, so now I'm going to back flush this I'm going to turn my pressure up just a little bit for back flushing just covering up the nozzle there, putting this over to keep the splatter from coming out. That'll blow any stuff out of the inside there. Uh, pour that out. Now, this, this brings me to another point, and you know, I, I guess maybe some people are able to do this. Again, 
Uh, I, well, I'm just going to be honest. I, I don't think it's really possible. There are people that will tell you that, you know, you can use the equivalent of this much cleaner and totally 100% clean and airbrush. And I just, I, I'm just, I fail to see it. I mean, you might get it to where you're blowing clear stuff out of it and maybe in between color changes, but to get it clean and then put it aside for a few days or weeks or whatever while you're not using it, I, I just, I don't, I don't see how that's even possible. Okay, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of disagreement. But that one is one that I'm going to kind of, you know, stick to my guns with and say that I don't really think it is possible to truly clean an airbrush that good with just, you know, a thimble full. And for those of, you to, those of you who don't know what a thimble is, look it up. But a thimble full of cleaner, I just don't see it because there's a lot of junk that can get down inside of these things, you know, so... Yeah, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. And those of you that can do it, well, yahoo for you, because I can't. And uh, I don't want to take a chance on my investment getting credit up, potentially clogged and all that stuff. So, all right, so that's looking pretty pretty clean. Um, do one more back flush, especially when you're using stuff like 91%. Um, alcohol I mean that stuff's cheap for a big giant bottle I mean I've been using this thing for I don't know how long and I've still got half a bottle left and I'm pretty liberal with it whenever I clean my airbrush so all right see see still getting stuff out still getting stuff out of that uh, the channel where the paint goes through Okay, so let me kind of wipe the inside of the bowl there, cup, and let's spray see. Look at all that beautiful paint. So here's what I'm going to do. Spray, put some more of this in there, and I'm just going to blow the snot out of this baby. I'm sorry if I'm getting my noggin in the way. Okay, it's pretty good. Now let's see what we get when we back flush. Still getting some tinted thinner or tinted uh, tinted stuff going on there. Yep, see. So let's do this one more time and then we're going to switch it up. There are some people that will back flush once, dump it out, spray some stuff through it, and oh, we're clean. Maybe, maybe on a really short project where you're not taking much time, but if it's sitting in there a while, stuff's going to start curing and cause problems. Okay, so that's looking a little better. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to switch up to my other stuff, which is lacquer thinner. Yes, lacquer thinner. This stuff's champion for this stuff. And I might add also, I'm not using it right now, but this stuff works really well as well. I, I'm just going to do that next time I use this airbrush. thinner see this folks this is real time this is what she is what you get I think what happens sometimes is uh, people will shoot a video and they'll like oh let me clean and they'll spray it through a couple of times then they'll turn the camera off and then spray spray clean 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 just to cut the, the time down 
and I'm not saying that they're doing it, you know, to give a false impression. They're just trying to save some time on the video, but then maybe, you know, forget to say, oh, by the way, I've been cleaning this thing for the last five minutes. All right, we're getting pretty clear now. And keep in mind, folks, that there's going to come a time when you're going to have to. Yeah, it's coming out clear now. So we're pretty good. You're going to have to uh, tear your airbrush down and clean it. So if you're afraid of doing that, you better learn because as clean as you can get these things, there's been some topic or people talking about it on uh, some of the other social outlets I check out talking about how you know you can clean it clean it clean it clean it clean it clean it and it'll look clean and once you tear it apart you're gonna discover that there's still all right nozzles clean the outsides all nice and clean so I think we're good to go. Let me shoot one more little bit out onto the paper towel. We'll see. Yeah. That looks pretty good. All right. And there you have it. So I'm going to, I still need to clean up the lid, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want to bore you. So anyway, so that's the, uh, that is the TRN1. I have to say, on this first use, uh, I really like it. The trigger pull is really nice. It really seems to uh, allow really good control. I mean, you can see I was doodling down here on the bottom. Hopefully, you can see. Um, so it'll be interesting to try it on an aircraft and do some mottling or you know camouflage patterns and stuff like that. But anyway that's my thoughts on this it's a pretty nice airbrush um, it did uh, take a little bit more to clean it than than my other uh, go-to airbrush airbrushes which are the uh, Iwata HP M2 uh, the single action um, takes takes a bit more to clean that one than it does this one this one cleans fairly quickly um, as does my uh, HP CS uh, seems to clean clean up a little bit quicker. It takes a little more to clean this one up to clear it out, but you know it's probably just the nature of the way it's uh, put together, the mechanics of it. So that's it, people. Um, so for the uh, beginner portion of it, beginner series, um, I've got the uh, kit painted, and for the review part, the Neo for Iwata. TRN1 trigger sprayer I really like my initial impression is I really like this airbrush and I'm going to talk about it more as I use it more and uh, try some other stuff with it because this one I really would like to look at it in depth because you know there, there's a few uh, review kind of things out there but not too many of them not as many as some of the other airbrushes so I'll just add my thoughts to the to the general consensus so anyway pretty nice um, next time I may try uh, experimenting with the um, stop that controls the maximum um, you can spray out of the airbrush but uh, anyway that's it so plastic models by a regular dude thanks for joining me for this uh, edition of plastic models for beginners slash um, airbrush review so if you have any questions or comments or would like to know uh, any more about this thing, uh, if I can answer your questions, I will uh, put them in the comments below. And uh, that's it for now. So until next time, I will see you all later.